Welcome to this video that is also on Kitchoff's Law. It is similar to the previous video. And one of the major differences I want to spot out is that in this case, the battery here is turning upside down. So we should note the uh, polarity. But similarly, we have our loop A and loop B. So we would go through the loops and we'll have equations for both loops. Current I1 has been marked to be the current flowing through this route. Current I2 has been marked to be the current flowing through this route, while current R3 has been marked to be the current that will flow through this route containing resistor R3. Straight to business. In the first loop, in loop A, we expect current to flow out of this 12 volts battery in this manner. And this direction agrees with loop A. Then we can start by saying 15. I say 15. The unit is volts. All the units will be in volts. Whatever we write in the equation will be in volts. So on getting to resistor R1, we have a marked I1 to be the current that will flow through R1. And the direction of I1 agrees with the direction with which we are going through the loop. So that means this will be a voltage drop. And that's the mean minus. So, and uh, the voltage drop here, voltage is IR from Ohm's law. And current here is I1, resistor value is R1. So the voltage drop is I1, R1. Since R1 is four ohms, that we can say four I1. Then coming to this side, we have left the battery, left R1. Now we're in R3. In R3, the current flow, I3 flows through R3. R3 is two ohms. That means the current flow, I3, flows through these two ohms. And the voltage that will drop will be two times I3. That is two I3. And since the Direction of I3 agrees with the direction of navigating through the loop. Then we'll say minus two I3 equal to zero. And let's move straight to the next loop. The next loop, we are moving this way. And if uh, we'll start from the battery, we expect current to flow out of battery in this way, in a clockwise direction. But we are navigating the loop in an anti-clockwise direction. Since the direction of navigating through the loop disagrees with the direction with which we expect current to flow normally out of this battery, then we start by saying minus 12. That's minus 12 volts. Then we'll continue the journey. We've left the battery. Now we are at resistor R2. I2 flows through R2. I2 flows through R2. That means there'll be a voltage drop of I2, R2. And that will mean minus because minus because the direction to which we are traveling around the loop which is anti-clockwise agrees with the direction 
with which I2 is flowing. That's why we have minus I2 R2 means I2 times three ohms. That is three I2. Now we get to, we've left the battery. We've left resistor R2. Now we are in resistor R3. Since I3 flows through R3 in a direction that agrees with our navigation about the loop, then we say minus two I3. Now we've left the battery, we left R2, we left R3. Now we have I4. What current flows through I4? The same current that flows through the battery through R2 will flow through R4. So that means that the I2, the I3 gets to this junction and splits into two. It splits into two. I2. splits into I2 and splits into I1. So since I2 will flow through the six, uh, six ohm resistor to the battery, through to the three ohm resistor, then we can determine what will happen at R4. And noting the direction, the direction with which I2 will flow through R4, the direction with which I2 will flow through R4, agrees with the direction with which we are navigating the loop. And that will mean six ohms times I2, six ohms times I2. And that will equal to minus six I2. So now we have left the battery, we have left the three ohm resistor, we have left the two ohm resistor, and we have also left the six ohm resistor. We have completed the loop. Then we say equal to zero. So to simplify these uh, two equations, let me name them equation one, equation two. The way to simplify is to Substitute I1 plus I2 for I3 in both equations. And by doing that, equation one will become Fifteen minus four I one minus two times I one that is two I one. Okay, let me make it simpler. Just say I one plus I two equal to zero, and that is fifteen minus four I one minus two I one minus two open the brackets to give minus two I one and minus two I two equal to zero. And that will give 15 minus four I one minus two I one is minus six I one. And minus two I two equal to zero. So we can call this our equation three. So let's also bring this out. 
this will be minus 12, minus 3i2. minus two, I one plus I two, minus six, I two equal to zero. And that will mean minus 12, minus three, minus two, I one, minus two, I two, minus, six i2 equal to zero and that's what I mean minus 12 minus two i1 let's start with i1 then let's go to i2 adding up the i2 should be minus three minus two minus six that will be minus 11. So this will be our equation. Simultaneously will give us I1 and I2. And since we know that I1 plus I2 equal to I3, and we can determine I3 from the knowledge of both I1 and I2. So I leave you to solve the simultaneous equation. See you.